Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I'm Peter, that is Tim. Yes, it is. We talk about horror movies, and it's <laughs> October, so everything's orange, and we're celebrating Ooh. the month of Halloween, and we're doing a bunch of extra episodes. And in this episode, we are going to talk about Neon Maniacs. Oh my god, how have we gone this long without talking about this movie? I do not know. I do not know. Oof. This is kind of a slasher movie. <laughs> kind of, not well, yeah, isn't it isn't. It is a movie that will leave you with a lot of questions. There is slashing going on, certainly. Yeah. Uh, but there there's a lot of different <laughs> types of slashing, I guess. There yeah, so basically this one is there's a team of well, demons, I guess we'll call it. I, mean, I don't sure. know what else to call it. Maniacs. There's like yeah. a samurai like looking one who's the main one. There's like a surgeon looking one. There's a soldier looking one. There's a Native American looking one. There's a few others as well. I can't remember them all, but the you know they all have like, like a theme. Electric gimp one. Oh yeah, electric gimp one. Yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair, he's the closest that any of them actually are to being neon in any way. Yeah. Not a whole lot of neon going on. <laughs> In the in the movie, no, it makes no sense, and I absolutely love it. This movie is <laughs> so bizarre, and for no like for no reason. I ah, oh, the, the, uh, the let's get right into it because okay. there's so much stuff I love about okay. it, and so many questions I have. <laughs> right, so the movie starts uh, more or less with a group of teenage... full spoilers, by the way. Yeah, full spoilers. With a group of teenage kids, uh, although I don't believe for a second that any of them are a day younger than like 23, but a uh, group of teenage kids in a van and they're going to, I guess, the park to uh, drink and be yeah. teenagers, I guess, as, as they do. Uh, but, so, yeah. So I am in- very interested in what the drinking age uh, in San Francisco at this time was. Because Pro- probably still twenty one. Because even though <laughs> they're supposed to be teenagers, e- even later on when one of them goes by like the main girl's house, uh, Natalie, she even yeah. just casually offers them a beer from the fridge as if it's just e- normal. E- even like uh, at the end when they're at like the school battle of the bands, a girl just like flat out <laughs> is drinking a beer. <laughs> in the school. <laughs> yeah. Yes, in the school. Not, not like a thing that's off site. Like actually in the yeah. school building, there's clear <laughs> alcohol consumption going on. And even even growing up in Scotland, like our drinking age was eighteen, so technically, yes, yeah, yeah. so our prom at the end of high school, some of us were old enough to drink. Oh, wow. and there was a bar, like oh, oh wow, yeah, I know, like I know that's probably extremely weird to you. Uh, yeah, because like I think some kids like got kicked out of our prom because they smuggled in some booze or something. Yeah. Uh, now we actually had, had a bar, and like everyone who went up got ID'd. Like they just ID'd everyone because obviously, yeah. you know, it's a breeding ground for, you know, uh, people. I just the, to that scene from, uh, oh, sorry, that scene from like Hot Fuzz just like popped in my head when <laughs> he's checking everyone's ID, and it's just like the one kid's like, uh. Yeah, also, like, you're thirty seven. Uh, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, so they go they go to the park, and we, we along the way we introduced to uh, Stephen, who's going to be the leading male, who's a little bit darker than the guys that are with them. Uh, but yep. of course, everyone but the main girl Natalie in this van is going to die in the uh, next like five <laughs> minutes, so he can't go with them. But right. so they're in the park, and Natalie and her friend, uh, I think Lisa was her name, but they're they're sitting. Yeah in the car and they have the most unnatural conversation about sex I have ever heard in my damn life uh, so so like two of the other randomers that are with them like they go off to have sex yeah I can't, I like well, how am I going to remember their names like there's like ten characters oh, no, I, just, I, I like that term that's funny yeah. and <laughs> They they go off to have sex and I, I don't know what her name was let's just, just in the park let's just say Claire right let's just say her name is Claire because okay. yeah. uh, the least the characters is Claire crazy. She's not even on the pill. And then Natalie's like, are you? It's like, of course I am. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Have you done it yet? It's like, why is that? Is that a crime? It's like, no, but you may be the, the last virgin in the high school. And it's just like, yeah. it's just it's just such this weird conversation. It's like every 80s teenage trope just turned up to like 20 in yeah. like 
people don't speak like this. I, I, I think it like fits in this movie because it is just such a like. It, it does. This is like yeah. 80s to the max. It's it, like... it, do, it, it does fit, but. Because it's one of the first like things that tell me what this movie yeah. is, it really stood out. Like I'm okay, this is just a weird oh, conversation. Yeah. Like I, 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 I don't, you know, um, it's well, it's well those things that I always get from like uh, teen movies, specifically American ones, where mm-hmm. their attitude is same with alcohol in this movie actually, but their attitude to sex isn't just you know because obviously teenagers do have sex, but mm-hmm. their attitude to sex is very like. It's as if they're in their thirties and it's and they've been doing it for years. You know, like that's the way they talk yeah. about it. Well, obviously not this conversation, but there's a lot of like, well, of, yeah, of course we're having sex. Like, you know, you know, like it, their attitude to it's just very weird in like of a of a later age where, you know, yeah. it, it feels like they're all employees at a company instead of teenagers in high school talking True, about yeah. sex rather than, you know, but whatever. So yeah, so the neon maniacs <laughs> show up. Cue the maniacs. Yeah, cue the maniacs. They show up, and uh, what one of the uh, yeah one guy's getting a blowjob, and they, <laughs> they they essentially chop off his dick with her head or his yeah. her head and then his dick. Well, but the head yeah. drops, and I can only imagine that his dick went with it. Ah, uh, so what? How I interpreted the scene <laughs> was that. <laughs> She is bending down to uh, give him a blowjob, and you kind of see like his face and his eyes are closed. And then you see him kind of wait for a second, and uh, the lady's head gets chopped off. And the way I kind of took it was that like she hadn't actually unzipped his pants All yet. All right, okay. Well, see, I thought so, they were, he was already standing, like you know, eyes shut, yeah. like enjoying it for a while before the. See what I th- what I thought is that he was like building up that anticipation, and then like oh, when right. he felt nothing after a few seconds, he opens his eyes and kind of a like, "Hey, what's going on?" kind of way, and then that's when he's like staring like full on <laughs> into a neon maniac. I love how we're actually just referring to them as the neon maniacs. Like I don't know, like what else to call he, them? Like he, they're he, demons, aliens. <laughs> look, I think they're from another dimension. There's a thing at the end yeah. that makes me think they're from a parallel dimension, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, but. Yeah, so so they kill everyone. Like they just they, they brutally murder everyone except Natalie, who's like stuck in the the van. She like locks the door. She can't. There's no keys, so she can't, she can't drive away. And then eventually yeah. the police show up. I, I will say that her reaction to the police feels very unnatural to me. Like, oh, yeah. she's almost like just kind of like be, bemused and maybe mildly annoyed that they're there, rather than like, oh my god, I've, my friends are all dead. Like, help me. Like, she she has a weird look on her face. It's like it, it was almost like. Uh, like it felt like kind of like a sitcom, like wah wah. <laughs> like mm. when the police comes in, like she's kind of like, huh, it "Took you long enough," or, or something like. <laughs> it, it is a, a very weird reaction. Uh, speaking of uh, the police feeling like from a sitcom, <laughs> the the captain dude, like because oh they're, my God. they're sitting around right in the captain's office, and like the various detectives are like saying, "Oh well, this story's not very believable. What should we do?" And yeah. the captain just, you know, leans back, like, you know, with his big cigar and is just like, let's see what daylight brings. And it's just like this really <laughs> cheesy line. <laughs> like, he always, like, has, thing? like, he has, like, a big smile to himself that he, he's always, like, seems so pleased <laughs> with, like, what he's doing or thinking. I mean, t- I'll skip ahead to another scene because it's, it's not really that relevant to the rest of the yeah. main plot that's going on. But later on, the captain phones, like, the other sort of main detective guy. He phones him at three in the morning, right? <laughs> and so the detective picks up and he like you know rolls over from his wife and like he sees that it's three, three o'clock and he picks up the phone and the captain's like, sorry to interrupt you at the, the, these late hours, but uh, I've decided that we need to tell the uh, Natalie, we need to tell the main girl. And <laughs> I was like, okay, that seems like a really weird thing to decide at three in the morning, but okay, he thinks that this needs to get done, so he's phoning them to do this now. But then he says. Go back to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Why did they have to tell him? Why did they have to phone him at three in the morning and tell him if he was going to not actually get him to do it until the morning anyway? Like, phone him at 8 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever. No idea. That's all I could think. If I was yeah. this detective, I would be so pissed that I'd be oh, woken yeah. up out of bed only to be told, tomorrow I want you to do this thing. I feel like the captain must be lonely. I feel like that's the only... Like, the only thing, like, he doesn't have anyone, and he was just kind of hoping to maybe get a little human interaction. 
in the bed. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it is 3 a.m. He could just go to sleep yeah. and get his human interaction in the morning. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, yeah. So we're introduced to another main character, uh, Paula, who is, like, obsessed with, um, like, monster movies and makeup, and she, like, wants to direct her own little movies and stuff. And she's got a, a ton of, like, monster masks up in her room and posters to other horror movies and yeah. all this kind of thing. And... Uh- I thought it was really cool just seeing her room just being like, oh, hey, cool, like Star Wars, Blade Runner, <laughs> E.T. Uh, you know, yeah. like all the little references or whatever the other the movies. 1979 version of Nosferatu, there was a poster of that on the wall. Oh, I might have missed that. Yeah. That's cool, though. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool one. Because yeah, you're used to seeing like Star Wars and Blade Runner pop up in posters like, in yeah. like movies, but that, that was like a really cool one. That was more specific. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, so yeah, we're introduced to her, and she's like wants to hear about the monsters. Like she hears this <laughs> has happened, and she tries to go to Natalie. Uh, meanwhile, Nat, like the main plot of the movie, kind of almost ignores them. <laughs> like, like it ignores the neon maniacs, and it's just about mm. it's about Stephen asking her out, and because <laughs> yeah. he goes over because his job is he he. That's the other thing about uh, teenagers in movies; they always have jobs. Always, oh, yeah. like obviously some teenagers, and it's same same you know with teenagers that i knew they had part-time jobs yeah. but it was like one day a week or two days a week and it was only maybe in the, the, the last year of high school or something like that mm-hmm. whereas i feel like in movies the teenagers always have jobs where they're doing them every day it's like this is basically full-time like what, yeah. what's going on <laughs> but yeah he he delivers uh like he you know groceries you know if you order them at home yeah. and he comes by and he brings them in and they have some yeah. small talk I gotta it, interrupt you for a second. Pete. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, no, but the, 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 it's relevant though because there's a line that he says that I'm kind of confused by. Okay, go on. Because he he's in his like uh, room at his house and his sister comes in and says like, "Oh, someone called out. You have to do <laughs> deliveries today." And he says like, "Oh, like why can't you do it?" And his sister's like, "Oh, I'm going shopping or something." And he says like, "I must have been switched at birth." And no, then no, he's no, going. No, 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 no. The line was, okay. "I must have been adopted," or "I knew I was adopted." I knew. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then uh, then he's doing the deliveries and he sees that he's delivering to Natalie's house. And then he and he's says, ha- he's, he's happy about this because, oh, that's the girl I like. Yeah. And then what does he say? I knew I wasn't adopted. Like, no, I thought he said I knew I was adopted, like a bit in a happier way. Or, or no, maybe they'll say that he, he wasn't adopted. Right. But like, yeah, but still, why? Like, does he like, saying he's saying that this is <laughs> fate i guess i think that's what he's saying like okay now, now, I, I, thought, I think before I thought... he was unhappy that he had to do deliveries yeah. but now he's happy that he's doing deliveries because it's leading them to her it just made it seem more like I mean, the way i took it was like did he think that like his dad was like hooking him up like it he comes in and starts putting putting all the groceries away into the fridge and he's like oh it's all part of the service and i'm like no it's not yeah people don't do this uh and she offers him a drink, and he's like, "Oh, I could go for a beer." I'm like, yeah. "You're dra- you're doing deliveries. You've still got more. We've seen in the van that there's more deliveries to happen, and you're just hanging out with her and having a beer in her mm-hmm. kitchen." Who, by the way, her parents are absent the whole movie. Like, they 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 basically explain in like one line that they're on vacation or something, and she's got the house there, to herself. There's a the, the, there's this part that really made me laugh because. Uh, she listens to a message from her parents and they say like something like hey uh we're leaving paris now we're going to rome like uh just wanted to check up or whatever bye uh and then she picks up the phone and she like dials like uh like an international operator and the operator is like what country please and she just like stops the operator is like what country please and then she just hangs up the phone and then uh, I saw this uh, in a theater, and like someone in the theater was like, "She not know where Rome is." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I got why she stopped, but that is quite funny. It's funny if you like yeah. if you look at it in that context, it is just like she's just super sad. Like I don't know countries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. So. Yeah, so they go on their date. Me- meanwhile, uh, Paula, of course, is uh, they- they're going to the location they think the uh, the park and the surrounding areas they're looking for, and they actually, she catches a glimpse of the neon maniacs, like, leaving the little... There's this, like, door to this, like, old, like, place under the bridge. Now, yeah, now, did you know that that was the bridge? 
like I like it seems like it's just like a weird place in the woods. But then at the end, they say like, oh, no, yeah, they, they live in like, um, at the bridge or something like. No, what? I, I did because you see it's the bridge in the opening scene, like when they kill that random guy. You see the you see the Golden Gate Bridge, which, by the way, they, they keep saying it's San Francisco, but this is so L.A. Uh, maybe it's just because I, I live here now, but and even from like 86, like I recognized a lot of the places, but um, eh, whatever else. Movies but they, that. yeah, they they show the the Golden Gate Bridge, but then like it's not like they pan down though, and then you see there's like a building under our sound. They just cut to this like weird door that. I don't know. I don't know how bridges work. I guess <laughs> I mean, they they have like I don't doors. know how I don't know how bridges work. Tim Vergulich, two thousand sixteen. Mark that one down, folks. I don't. I'm just like I don't know. Do they have like are they also buildings that you can go into? Well, where it's a giant bridge like that, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that bridge specifically does, but okay. I can imagine like old bridges that are made of stone, like having rooms in the you know the main big okay. bulky bits. Yeah. Yeah. The the I was going to call it a column. I don't know if you'd call it a column when it's that big, but... I get what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, like a maintenance place or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Just just more great lore for the Neon Maniacs. <laughs> this is the Neon Maniac universe, Tim. Don't go questioning the logic, all right? So, yeah. So despite the fact that she was like attacked by, like what, like eight maniacs or whatever it was, and she survived, they're going on a date. So, you know, Stephen... And- Sorry to interrupt you again, but also, like, uh, we skipped over it, but, uh, like, pretty much all of her friends die in front of her. Mm-hmm. If that happened to you, would you go to school the next day? No, I would not. <laughs> I'd probably not go back to school for a month. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just a hunch. But, no, she goes back to school the next day, and then everyone, yeah. like, doesn't believe her because she's telling this crazy story about monsters and whatever. But... Yeah, so they're going on a date. He's asked her out. Meanwhile, Paula gets some footage of the, the maniacs and sees one of them trip or whatever into a, a puddle and yeah, discovers that water is the uh, the weakness of the maniacs, which will com- <laughs> come into play later. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but one comes by our house because I guess they they realise that they've been filmed or something. I, I don't I, know how. I have no idea what they're like motivations are like are they just randomly killing people well they seem, or are they they, they seem to want natalie because she got away but they, one of them comes by paula's house and i'm not entirely sure why although unless one of them noticed her uh filming yeah. and that's why but we we did skip over one of my favorite scenes where or the pool? after well after well, i do like the pool uh but like after she films uh uh, or I might be jumping around, but no, it's before. No, I know what you're talking about. This is this is during the, the, the during, cop in the bike. Yeah, during the day, okay, okay, Paula okay. is like scouting out the area, and she goes down to where the store is, and a cop like tells her to get lost. <laughs> and when she's going on, on her way back to get her bike, this other cop comes riding down on her bike, which is clearly like a, a kid's yeah. like girl's bike, you know. And the cop is having so much fun, and then he looks so disappointed when he sees her. He's like, "Oh." Is this your bike? It's like, yeah. He's like, well, yeah, like he's like, you can tell he doesn't want to give it back. Yeah, yeah he it, really wants this little girl's bike. She, she cracks a joke about uh, not breaking her bike, and she rides off. And it, the camera lingers on him, and he, he gives this smile, this sort of like, huh. Oh, maybe next time I'll get it like ride it longer. You know, it's if you, it's that kind of smile. It's like, oh, I had fun. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's like this is like a weird mashup of like someone wanted to do a slasher movie and then like someone wanted to do like an 80s teen kind of romantic comedy or something and maybe even like a little bit of like a sitcom or something and it's like all melted into this one gigantic mess yeah that, so that i love <laughs> finally we get to the date that i've been telling telling them about yeah. for ages there we get to the date and they have to take the subway because uh uh what's his name steven's car is not working yeah. so they're on the subway and then all the, all the maniacs start coming down the subway, and I love how the guy in the ticket booth is just yeah. watching them use their powers and like swords and stuff on the uh, the, uh, the what do you call them the the barriers. turntile yeah yeah turntiles yeah. yeah and uh, and it's so funny too like you're so used to seeing like especially like with like slashers and stuff they're very like slow 
And then it's just weird seeing the maniacs just like running and like jumping right over. <laughs> it's like it's like oh, it's very strange. So for some reason they they point out how quiet it is and how there's hardly anyone around, but they never actually give a reasonable reason why. Yeah, I just said reasonable reason. <laughs> um, but you know, mm. like it's it's deserted. Like there's the only people on the train is them and the driver. They actually point mm. this out. And we get this stock interest scene throughout the train, and that's, that's all fine and it's fun. Mm. But the reason, the reason why I'm really pointing this out and bringing it up that they this all happens, so it becomes clear that these maniacs are stalking them, mm. stalking her specifically, and they're they've killed all her friends and they're now after her. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I then have to question why, for the rest of the movie, their main priority, their main concern. <laughs> Is that they still get to go to their high school battle of the bands dance, <laughs> and instead of thinking maybe we should call things off, maybe we should you know get to a safe place away from these neon maniacs, yeah. they say, once they meet up with Paula and Paula explains the water weakness, they say let's get water guns. Yeah, the I guess their reasoning is that they're like, well, this scene made me laugh too but like when they're all kind of thinking of like what they're gonna do and then steven's just like kind of like he shoots up like he, he like he has a brilliant idea he's like like what about the battle of the bands like you know like we can everyone in school will be there we could get water guns and they all act like oh this is genius <laughs> <laughs> i was like are you like and again it's that same thing where if you saw all your friends die would you go to school the next day no, what, like no, never mind a part like a party like a battle of the bands yeah. dance yeah. Like you, right and then Obviously, this plan is complete and utter nonsense because as soon as the neon maniacs show up at the school, they like just immediately start killing people. And sure, yeah, like uh, Paula gets the, the the fire hose and like you know yeah. takes some of them out. But like I, th- I think the uh, the cop mentions afterwards that uh, like fifteen students have died during <laughs> yeah. all this. So yeah, that was a great plan. Well, well, we have uh, I think we we see a neon maniac that we haven't seen before that just steps in the dance, which it looks kind of like a disgruntled army vet that mm. just like has a machine gun and then just starts shooting everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, I feel like they're like, Oh, we didn't plan for this. We yeah. thought they were just going to be like a slow crossbow or a tomahawk guy. Yeah. Everything just goes down. People die. We see some of them get melted with the water, but it like, it's just, it's just chaos. And yeah. by the way, we do get, oh, I'm sorry. The movie like lingers on them playing music far too long. Like, like, see, because there's this thing where like uh, Stevens in a band, right, and they're the yeah. first band to go, and they play this song. We hear pretty much the whole song, and it's intercut with like shots of the neon maniacs like walking out of their their base and walking towards the school. Yeah. Then the opposing band, yeah. the sort of the more punky metal, hair metal band, they play yeah. a song, and we still see intercut shots of all the maniacs <laughs> coming into the school. They actually, yeah. they spend this all over two songs, two full songs yeah. of them slowly getting towards the school. Yeah. It's really, it just it wastes so much time doing it. Now, the, I, I do agree that the second song is a little much, but I love the first song. Oh, I, it's super 80s, don't get me wrong. It's, like I'm not complaining about the song. But again, it, it adds into this whole, the characters are not acting like they really yeah. should be, because... Uh, like Natalie's just like, oh man, my boyfriend's pl- my new boyfriend's yeah. playing a song on stage, and Paul oh. Paul is over to the side, just sitting down like, yeah. with her legs crossed, just nodding her head the entire time. Like, oh, there, I love when Paula first like sees the first neon maniac. She starts yelling, she's like, Natalie, Natalie, and Natalie looks at her and she's just like, yeah, hey, yeah, <laughs> like, music's great, yeah. It's like if your friend who knows that the killers are coming is like, like yelling at you maybe be a little more like alert <laughs> maybe it might did have to you do forget with the about the uh, massacre that happened yeah. <laughs> three nights ago where all of your friends were brutally <laughs> murdered did you forget about that natalie now something interesting i noticed about the song because uh, this is my uh second time viewing i think i saw it for the first time like a year or two ago and i saw it uh again this year and it's really climbed the charts for me but um earlier uh at some point either before like the subway attack or after the subway attack um you know natalie's talking about like the maniacs and and stuff and steven says like well that's like a a way to ruin your evening and uh now when i watch it that's the first line of the song he starts singing 
So I'm kind of wondering, like, did he make up this song, like, about <laughs> the maniacs, or like, was he inspired somehow? Like, I don't know. Most by... <laughs> of the most of the song is about a woman lying to him. So I, I don't know. That doesn't really add up. Which is also kind of weird because it looks like he's singing to Natalie and she looks like she's like swooning. But the song is kind of like, yeah, the, like, you know, my baby lied. And she's all like, she looks like she's like, ooh, that's me. <laughs> it's very bizarre. But again, I love it. Uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're all right. I'll, I'll, if I have any complaints is that I don't think the end of the skill section like actually builds to like a proper good climax. It feels like there's a scene that's missing. Yeah, it just kind of ends. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then, then there's a little bit after that where the cops have them all, and the, the the three kids, you know, all convince them like, like go to this place under the bridge, and there's this great scene of all the cops taking all the guns out of their <laughs> their cars, and they're all these water guns because they've been told yeah. about the water, um, and they go I in love, it and they can't find anything. Yeah, I love like the setup to that because again we have uh, that like police captain, and he's like interrogating him like, and he's like. <laughs> So let me get this straight. You're telling me that there are these maniacs that live under the bridge that come out at night that are defeated by water. And it seems like he's saying it like to be like, like you crazy kids, you you yeah. expect me to believe this? And then it just cuts to like him and like all of his like, it's like, oh, like he really made it seem like he was not believing yeah. them. But <laughs> And a fire engine. They've brought a fire yeah. engine so they can like have a proper hose to blast water and all that. And yeah. they go in and they don't find anything and everyone just kind of leaves and that's, you know, <laughs> basically the end of the movie. But we get one final scene of the, the captain going back into the location. Why he's going back in for a second look unprotected, like, like if he thinks there's a chance there's anything there, why <laughs> would he go in, like, with no backup? But he yeah. finds this truck and there's a, the music builds up to him opening it, so you feel like there's going to be something in there. And there's this blinding light inside, and he gets pulled in. Like, he gets killed, sort of pulled in and killed as he's going in. And it, it feels like there's probably a portal in there to another world. So, there's this one maniac. Most of them are like these humanoid things, but there's this one little tiny Monster. green. Yeah. Well, he's got one eye. Thing. He's got one yeah. eye as well. One eye and like hooks for hands. And now. When I saw this uh, over the weekend, uh, I saw it um, again at this uh, film festival, Beyond Fest. They're playing, uh, playing it, and um, as I was waiting in line, I, I started like you know chatting with the uh, the guy in front of me, and he, I guess he was like this dude that's like obsessed with this movie, and he was telling me how he's like did all this research and like looked like for interviews and articles about it, and uh, he was telling me about how I guess that thing is called like the grabber or something and its purpose is to grab people and pull them into the neon maniacs dimension so i i mean what that means i have no idea but he i that's what this guy was, I feel was like telling me they should have made it a bit clearer that they were from a different oh, yeah. dimension you know like yeah. it really is just this one scene at the end that kind of gave me that thought you know that yeah. they were that's why they couldn't find anything in there because they don't actually stay in there that just happens to be where the portal yeah. is that they all come out of um, but no, it, I I probably sound like I'm being quite negative, like I'm I'm like mocking it, and but I actually really enjoyed the movie. So I like I am totally in love with this movie. Uh, like it's just there's so many like problems with it, and it's so so cheesy. But I I love it for those reasons. It's I feel like it's so much fun to watch. Um, it's so bizarre, and it's, I kind of. It's exactly the sort of cheesy 80s movie that I can sort of set yes. my teeth into. It's not necessarily a good movie. <clears throat> no. Um, you know, the acting is normally pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's got really goofy elements, and like we said, it feels like there's a scene missing at one point, but... What I think happened is... Um, I, I think they stopped filming, like, halfway through the movie for, like a couple of weeks maybe even like a month or so because they were having money problems and that this could be wrong i just i i heard some people talking about it uh but um yeah they're saying like they stopped filming and then they finally got some money back but then like some people that were working on the movie had moved on that's why kind of like in the later half of the movie you get these like neon maniacs that you hadn't previously seen and then some are missing um so I, i'd be really i'd actually be really interested to see like uh Maybe not like a full-on documentary, but like maybe like a little mini doc about like 
some of the choices in this movie and like how it mm. came to be. Does not surprise me. Yeah. Does not surprise yeah. me. But it is a lot of fun. If you like 80s movies that are kind of silly, kind of cheesy, yeah. uh, <laughs> with just absurd like character decisions and you know the way the way the characters almost like yeah they they talk about the maniacs and they know it's a threat but like I don't know it just it feels weird that they're, like their plan is yeah. to have the battle of the bands and just oh everyone will have a water gun but the problem yeah. is is they don't actually tell any of the other people that are there that the water hurts them well, so, you know what it kind of reminded me of go on the is it season three finale of Buffy yeah but that made more sense because they actually informed all of the students of what was going on right that's the yeah. difference yeah they yeah. they arm all the students but they actually tell them what's going on and what's going to happen yeah. uh well whereas, is this they they give everyone squirt guns and people are just like yeah squirt guns are like squirting each other whereas in this natalie herself doesn't even seem <laughs> to have her own squirt gun yeah. and yeah. she's not even paying attention she's just lost in the music she's like oh my boyfriend's up there and he's you know playing songs for me yeah. Also, like, how was there not, like, a plot to, like, just release, like, the fire alarms in the school or whatever and have, like, automatic sprinklers? Like, like, how was that not where they were going with it? That seems like the, such an obvious plan. I am yeah. I am amazed that they did not do that. I know. <laughs> and maybe, uh, maybe they could explain it. Oh, they didn't have those in this school at that time. Fine. Maybe. But, you know, like... Yeah. Lure them to the hose. The hose are, is clearly going to be yeah. way more effective than, you know, yeah. these little stupid <laughs> squirt guns, yeah. which some of which seem to have unlimited ammunition. Uh, well, oh, I, yeah. I say ammunition. <laughs> they had unlimited water. <laughs> uh, um, I also like during the dance, we get that, uh, that trope that I love in horror movies where uh, a girl mistakes the killer for just being like a, a, a regular person. Yeah. Yeah, they're like all dressed look, up because even though it's not yeah. Halloween, they are all. It's, it's a dress up party. They're all. Oh, uh, I like that the the costumes were actually like real like costumes and like licensed characters and stuff. Like we got like Chewbacca, Miracle Man, or Mister Miracle. Spider Man was there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm not sure, but I I would care to speculate that the rules about that were different when this was made. And oh yeah. That they didn't pay for the rights to these. Like, it's just at the time... Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Like, they just get away with it because, like, like, the light... Maybe the rules for, like, something like that where it's just, it's just like, a Halloween party and there's, like, a costume. They've uh, probably gotten a lot more, like, defined and strict now where it's like, no, 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 you're still using the image of Spider-Man. You can't do that. Right, yeah. Yeah. Because I... I find it hard to believe for a movie that was running out of money halfway through shooting, they could afford <laughs> yeah. to pay Marvel for Spider Man. Oh, like, you know, without a doubt, yeah, r- ridiculous. Um, just one last thing I just got to bring up because it's just like, what the <laughs> hell is right in the beginning? That fisherman, he finds this. Oh, that's box right. With he, he finds like playing cards of all the neon <laughs> maniacs. What is that? <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I'd forgotten about that because it's right at the start of the movie. I like I I I I, I can't even like it doesn't even posit a theory as to what because it, it doesn't that would be. it doesn't fit with the the whole dimension stuff, which yeah. seems to be accurate. That seems to be the case. But where do these cards come from? I don't I don't know. Like is, is that like a way to summon? them or something or i have absolutely no idea i don't know uh thoughts and theories in the comments below would be wonderful about the cards um but yeah uh ratings timmy well i i'm going to jump in i'm I'm going to give this a solid 6.5 okay uh i you know i'm gonna give it in honor (laughs) of the time period it's set and I'm going to give it an 8 <laughs> okay um, now make no mistake I really enjoyed watching this yeah. but there's only so high I can go with a movie like this yeah I, I understand it's uh, I, uh, this is this is based purely on like a fun factor for me so I, I just have a lot of fun with this I'm yeah like if I was if I was gonna 
get very technical <laughs> with it. Uh, you know, and bump it down a lot, but I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, I get you. Uh, so... That's us. That's uh, Neon Maniacs. I uh, hope you've enjoyed our discussion. I'm glad that we watched the movie we enjoyed because we've had quite a few stinkers uh, recently. So, thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Definitely check out our t weekly Tales from the Crypt reviews. Uh, me and Tim are revisiting, working our way through that old show. Uh, I'd never seen it before, so I'm having good fun doing that. that there'll be a link in the corner to the Mailed Fuzz TV channel where uh, you can find that. Um, but otherwise guys though thank you very much for watching uh, check out our friends over at Ronin's Reviews uh, they do written content of uh, lots of horror movies and other stuff uh, there'll be a link in the description so yeah thank you very much for watching guys uh, keep watching scary movies we'll see you next time